Have you a sister in show business? Yeah. Yeah. Now get Jazz yeah, yeah, oh. Gabor. <laughs> Uh, oh, dear. Um, Want to flip a coin? <laughs> yes, I do. Now, um, one of them's in Europe, man. That's obviously one we have here tonight. Well, are you the, the fairer of them? Usually. I guess so. <laughs> are you Joan Fontaine? Yes! <laughs> Can you describe what the whole of the ballyhoo of, of the Academy Awards was like? Well, this was frightening to me because Olivia was up for it also. Your sister. And uh, I never <coughs> expected to get it. Had I not uh, got it for Rebecca, I thought it's silly to think of it for suspicion because it, uh, they weren't comparable to me. And I was making a picture called The Constant Nymph. And Olivia called me that day, as did the head of the Screen Actors Guild, Jean Herschelton, and said, you are coming. I said, no, I can't. I've got to get up at 5 in the morning. Uh, I'm going to be on the set until 6.30 tonight. I couldn't begin. I haven't any clothes to wear or anything else. So, Olivia, and we were supposed to be enemies at this time, which is so ridiculous, brought a seamstress over and several lovely gowns that she had purchased for me, tried them on on the set, and did all that was so sweet and so wonderful of her. But the legend of you and your sister constantly feuding is Isn't has, it fun? has no foundation. Oh, it has lots of foundation, but uh, no fact. How's that? <laughs> you like that? Your sister, Olivia de Havilland, did some of the horror movies. Did you yes. talk to her about it? Why? No, no, I didn't. You, you wonder why someone like I guess they just want to keep. It was the Vogue at the time, and Betty Davis was doing them, and Joan Crawford was doing them, and the might have thought it was kind of a, an amusing thing to do and another kind of, another facet. And I think, as we were just saying, maybe they wanted to prove that they could play all kinds of parts. Well, fine. Well, if we're going to talk, we have to get back to the subject of your sister, Olivia de Havilland, because, oh, I guess for so long, so much of the publicity about you and her had to do with the two of you feuding mm -hmm. um, up for the same parts. Of course, maybe the only time in history that two sisters were up for an Academy Award in the, in the same year. Is that yeah. feud still going on? Well, it wasn't, didn't happen there. I really think it happened when I was born. My sister being a little older than I was, um, we were born in the Orient, and we had armors and all that sort of thing. I was a sick little child, and I don't think Olivia was allowed in my nursery. And then I think she rebelled and wouldn't come in even. And the, it started there, that kind of, not we can't even say sibling rivalry yet. But uh, it was not helped. We are highly motivated, and our parents and people around us uh, brought us up with a... a point of view of vying you can she can't kind of thing contest uh, that makes for achievers it's a marvelous thing that way but it doesn't make for a particular close bond because we were rivals long before we thought of being actresses it was the way we were brought up and I'm sorry about it I wish it hadn't been so did it bother you too that the press and the public seem oh, yeah. to take such a perverse glee and you know writing up everything? Oh, my dear, they don't print the nice things. My sister and I took my father's ashes to Guernsey, where he was brought up with my mother, and she and I sprinkled his ashes into the English Channel at sunset. Not one newspaper printed that. When she came to New York and I gave her a party, nobody printed that. No, I guess you know, they smiling don't... faces, shaking hands, just don't they make good don't stories. They don't want that. No, they, they like the feud. I think what it is, is it justifies their own feelings. Because a lot of brothers and sisters or families don't get along. And they say, aha, you see, I'm not so bad because they don't get along. It's a personal thing with a lot of people. Oh, well, it's also just press agentry. Well, it's that, too. But we were, we are our rivals. There's no doubt about it. We always played the same kind of roles, and sometimes she'd get a role or I'd get a role. As a matter of fact, she's very nice to admit that I got her gone with the wind because I went in to read for it, and I was going to do Rebecca. And I said, what about my sister? And George Cukor said, who's that? I said, Olivia de Havilland. He said, well, I never thought of her. She got it the next day. But Olivia's very kind about that, and... 
So we have been uh, if, buying, not only uh, in the family, but in our careers as well. If you were brought up to be kind of competitive, were yes. you both also brought up to be actresses? It, I mean, it is a bit of an accident. It's interesting. Well, it isn't really. My mother was Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. She played the piano and sang beautifully. Since she's a Victorian lady, they weren't allowed to be on the stage. However, she could sing and she could play the piano. That was permitted. So when we first came to America from Japan, uh, mother was uh, concerned with our sloppy speech. And I remember sitting around the dining room table reciting Shakespeare when we could just read that far back and precisely and we got our knuckles wrapped if we slurred or mispronounced we did little restoration comedies things like that now whether my mother had a view to having her daughters fulfill her own ambition i don't know but we had a marvelous background for it we had ballet lessons from the age of five and six we had piano lessons we had singing lessons French lessons, all the things that actually turned into perfect equipment for us, studies. We, on the other hand, had other kind of lessons. We had a kind of tutorial background where we had domestic sciences, and uh, I learned to cook uh, with a tutor by the time I was 10. I had made my own dresses, cooked complete meals. I even learned to garden and to graft. Trees. And when did you decide to put all of that together into your own ambition to be an actress? I think it was opportunity and fate. I mean, the, uh, uh, frankly, they didn't believe in college education for girls. That is a very English Victorian attitude, but they didn't. Olivia won a scholarship to Mills College. I went to Japan and had a year at the, uh, the uh, American School in Tokyo got back to find Olivia had started in Midsummer Night's Dream. I was engaged, went down to Hollywood to say goodbye to her. And the silly man said to me, I was reading poetry, which I adore, and he said, oh, put that book down. You're only a bit of fluff. <laughs> well, I tell you, <laughs> oh, that made me absolutely determined that he would eat those words. And um, off went the engagement ring and into an agent's office. I went, did two plays, then was seen by Jesse Lasky and signed on, uh, for movies. Another thing that I admire so much about my sister, that Olivia went as far as the Supreme Court, and it is called the de Havilland decision, and she broke the seven-year contract where they could extend it forever, and they could put you on suspension when you weren't paid. Olivia did that, and in a sense, ruined the whole studio star system, because it couldn't survive without the peonage that we'd all been put through, where they could loan you out for half a million dollars and still be paying you nothing. And uh, I always used to wonder why Joan Fontaine didn't write a book. Well, can I ask you, A, why... First of all, how do you feel? Do you feel good? You feel yeah, great? Fine, yeah. Why No Bed of Roses? A, why a book, and why the title No Bed of Roses? Well, uh, a book, because I think there is a time when you want to set the record straight. I've read so many erroneous articles. Right. And the facts are all mixed up, including the fact that, that uh, my sister and I are only half-sisters, which is not true, and many other things. So I thought, somebody's got to straighten the whole thing out, and I'd, it better be me. It's a fabulous book. Now, your sister is not yet, but, 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 but do you cover the, the so-called stormy uh, relationship with Olivia de Havilland? Well, you know, uh, if I may say so, yes. um, uh, uh, my sister... Um, is a few months older than I am. Yes, she is. And uh, we were born in Japan. And I don't think that uh, the new member of the family was properly presented to her. Right, right. So from the cradle there was resentment. And uh, we're all alike. Some, some of us never get over being children about certain things. And she, in spite of her present age, simply cannot get over the that that um, sibling was an intruder Jeez. and i'm philosophical about it because right. i i feel it's not me no it could have been you if you'd been uh, her brother she would have uh, felt the same way and it's so important for parents to introduce the newcomer to the older child properly she was a movie star before you yes right yes she was here you know a couple of did, did she have 
did, did, did you or she ever have kind of a girlhood or, or a childhood crush on uh, Errol Flynn? She had one on Errol Flynn. And right. I had several, too. I say in the book, which is rather amusing, I think, yes. that my first crush was Ramon Navarro when Ramon. I was about five. Right. And uh, Olivia said, well, she, of course, was in love with the most... Um, important man in the world because his name was written everywhere at Nosmo King. Right, right. So when I got a little, a little older and could read, indeed she was right, no smoking was written absolutely everywhere. You mentioned in the book, and to me that's a very sad thing, that, that you can't remember your sister Olivia de Havilland having done anything warm or kind to you in my childhood. Yeah. I say definitely in my childhood. And uh, I don't think a child does. A child remembers mm -hmm. the uh, whatever, whatever it remembers. It may not be absolutely accurate, but I actually do not remember any act of kindness. That is true. Breaking your collarbone was certainly... Well, that was an accident. I'm sure it wasn't entirely intentional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always thought really all, that was all publicity, the feuding sisters. That, 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 that wasn't true. That couldn't... Uh, well, we are naturally... Um, my mother also. Our family are all eccentric, I have to admit. My father was like, eccentric. My mother was a very definite and positive person. And my sister and I are very definite, positive people. Mm -hmm. So you put that together, then you are bound to have differences of opinion. You just have to. We are not passive people in any way. When was the last time that, that you spoke to your sister? I did not speak to her at my mother's memorial. And so it was the previous telephone call when she wanted my mother operated upon at 88. And I had uh, mother prepared mother for death for months on the phone by talking to her, and she didn't want to live. And uh, my sister wanted her to be uh, opened up and explored, and I uh, couldn't take that one. And I said, it's uh, entirely up to my mother, our mother, but uh, no way am I going to sanction this. You weren't even notified of her death. Olivia sent me a telegram, but it, I had, was on tour, so it got uh, mailed to me two weeks later at my next stop. She didn't bother to find out where I could be reached or to telephone me. You, I have to raise this, I'm sure it's been raised many times, but you have this feud with your sister Olivia de Havilland. Did this come about because you were rivals? I mean, she was a year older than you and her success came more quickly than yours did. Did you find being... I tried to explain in the book that it really happened, I think, at my birth because my mother said that Olivia, since we were born in Tokyo, there were a lot of armors and servants and all that sort of thing. And she was rather the cock of the walk. And then the little intruder comes in. Now, the, I, as, as, as an intruder, I was a very sickly baby. And I had eczema all over my body for two years. I was in cotton wool. So I must have got a great deal of attention. And she must have been told, don't disturb the sleeping child, or you can't go and see her because she's um, asleep, or whatever it is. And that, so I was not a little doll to play with. I was somebody who was upsetting her realm, as it were. But people and usually grow out of that when they yes, grow they older, do. don't they? Yes, they do. And she has not been able to. She, not you, or both of you? I have what have I got. Mm. I, I, I'm proud of an older sister. I have no resentment of any kind. Mm. You actually, funnily enough, won an Oscar before she did for your performance in Suspicion. Was that uh, a bone of contention as well or not? No, she wouldn't raise that. I mean, it's a fair fight, isn't it, if it is a fight at all. I feel um, a little guilty about it, but I feel a little guilty that, I, that Brian and Hearn, to whom I was married, had never even been nominated, and he was there. So that was rather awkward only within me, but they, I hope, were happy for me. It was said during many, many years that um, you, you and your sister Olivia Havre were quite unfriendly. It's Is quite that true? true, and we still are. Oh, really? Yes. So there. I can't believe it. Uh, no, but <laughs> the point, uh, point is that um, being born in Japan and having armors and all that sort of thing, I was not introduced to my sister properly, I think. Oh. Uh, you're going to have a baby sister to play with. All that didn't happen. 
and so oh, she was uh, 15 months when I was born, enough to be an intrusion and spoil her act. Oh. And I've been spoiling it ever since. <laughs> oh. well, then, he, then the legend is true. It's absolutely true. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. She well, never actually, got over it. I talked to a child psychologist about it once, and he said, if it hasn't um, <laughs> cured by the time you're, oh, 20, it will never change. It will never change, yeah. and it didn't. Mm -mm. Mm. Okay. Anyway, uh, your ways in Hollywood never met. I mean, you, you, you were in one studio, she was in another one, and then the, the, That's the, right. there was some problem in But they one. tried to get us in the same picture often. But uh, that would have been another Hiroshima if they had put <laughs> us together. How lovely you tell it. You have noticed, I haven't said a word like, uh, about the person who played uh, Melanie Hamilton in Gone with the Wind. It's a, it's a story that you can say nothing. Are you talking about my sister? And, and I'll just tell you that she is a lion and I am a tigress <laughs> and they don't get along. <laughs> I see.